Here's the world champion of golf, Gary Player. Boy. <laughs> he gave him a thrill again, didn't he? He's one of the top three golfers in history, more or less. And uh, you'd assume that someone like him wouldn't, uh, wouldn't put his name to something that was not legitimate or, you know, wasn't going to work out. The name of golfing titan Gary Player is caught up in a worldwide stock scam. A company, part of Gary Player's empire, is being sold by fraudulent stockbrokers. Part of me uh, has always wondered for probably the last year how legitimate the whole thing was actually going to be. And uh, to a point you accept the fact that you may have lost your entire investment. Australia is just one of many countries targeted in this global racket and Gary Player's name just one of those being used to sell shares to thousands of Australians by overseas brokers. Ordinary Australian investors are parting with millions of dollars to get a piece of what are touted as cutting-edge American companies. But the money seems to vanish. You add in a little bit of greed, you add a little bit of urgency into the, into the equation, you can create a uh, an environment that you know you need to act now and that's really what it's all about is getting people to act immediately and to send their money immediately to a significant number of strangers tonight four corners goes on the chase tracking international fraud to try to find where the money's gone who's behind the scams and if Australian investors will ever see their money again Can you move into the middle aisle, right here, now? Everyone, get up from the chair. Stand in single file. We want to see your ID, your passport, or any type of your photo ID. Eight weeks ago, the ABC's Bangkok Bureau filmed a raid in which over 80 expatriates were arrested, amongst them 10 Australians. So please do not use the phone. They were engaged in an illegal stockbroking operation, selling shares over the telephone to countries like Australia and New Zealand. On offer, amazing deals on discount shares for those who get in quick. It looked like the classic example of what's known as a boiler room. Now, I'm telling you, this stock is going to burn, right? I'm invested very heavily myself, and we just stay put. The Hollywood movie, The Boiler Room, quite accurately shows how this scam works. A very mobile call centre defrauds mum and dad investors via telephone sales. But I'm not some 18-year-old selling the cure for AIDS. I'm 46 years old, I have 22 years of market experience. The film recreates the hype of brokers selling shares in companies that don't exist. It's based on a sting which has been around in the US for more than 20 years, often mafia controlled. The movie shows many of the tricks used. This stock is blowing up right now. The whole firm's going nuts. Hold on, let me open up the door to my office. See that, Doc? Give me the 2,000 shares. Done. Recently, the scam has become more sophisticated. Fraudsters have moved from Long Island to Bangkok and sell shares around the world in companies that do exist. Unfortunately, these shares can't be redeemed and investors' money disappears. The pitch, though, remains the same. Here's a recent recording from a Bangkok boiler room. This is going to take less than two minutes. Give me a, give me a shot here. Hey, i got to tell you something. I mean, I've been in this business 22 years, and the reason for the call, it is more important than anything in the world. Yeah, they were based in Thailand. Debbie um, Island from Brisbane is the kind of person they're calling out of the blue. Sure the boiler room that was raided sold her shares in an American company called Interactive Solutions Corporation. They called my husband at our business, offering us offshore shares, which my husband declined initially. However, they kept calling um, with, a, a, with a deal that was too good to miss out on, basically. So they asked us to invest a small amount initially, which we thought couldn't hurt. 
um, which we did. When you direct debit, the form that they actually sent us back said, you know, now that we've received your direct debit of a, whatever money you paid, then within a week you will receive the share certificates. And of course we didn't receive them, but at the time I didn't think it was a big issue. The first investment was $1,830, and over a period of the next six months it turned into $76,000. Mark, who doesn't want his last name used, also got a call. I love my golf. Uh, my brother introduced me to, to golf when I was young. And as a golfer, you certainly would have known the name Gary Player. Exactly, exactly. And, and that was certainly something that gave me a lot of uh, belief in the fact that this would be a good opportunity. Uh, with a name like that, it was certainly reassuring. Two years ago, Mark was phoned by a man claiming to be from a large broking house in Tokyo. He was offered shares in a company called Gary Player Direct, a business that marketed golfing equipment licensed by the famous golfer. The broker claimed inside information that it'd bring financial returns in 60 to 90 days. They could give you information that other people didn't really have access to or give you an opportunity that most people wouldn't. So you'd have the inside running on certain shares that the general public wouldn't have? Exactly. And obviously this would bring, for, bring greater returns? Indeed. And, you know, their, their returns were often suggested to be in excess of 100, 200 per cent. So, you know, for example, if a stock had been $5, they, you know, guaranteed that within sort of six to nine months it was likely to be anywhere from 12 to $15. The brokers sent glossy brochures with extensive information about Gary Player Direct. Mark also received information about the brokers themselves, who go by the name of the Brinton Group. It all looked pretty legitimate. You know, there was pretty comprehensive information. You know, they weren't pushing for a, a great deal of investment. They followed up with a phone call not long after that and, uh, and asked whether I was interested, and I thought, well, it looked pretty good and um, started with just a small investment to see how it panned out. He started small, but over six months, the Brinton Group sold him shares costing hundreds of thousands of US dollars. They told him Gary Player Direct was listed on the prestigious NASDAQ. It wasn't. It was being traded on a lesser known and risky market called the over-the-counter bulletin board. But the NASDAQ website displays these bulletin board companies. Mark watched the share price go up and phoned Brenton wanting to sell. They were pretty reluctant to do that. They'd assure you that you know, it would either go up further or if it went down a little bit further, it was, it was going to bounce back up. So uh, they pushed fairly hard not for you to uh, endeavour to get your money back. What Mark did not know was that Gary Player Direct was in deep financial trouble and was already delisted when Brinton started selling him shares. Gary Player Direct did briefly relist, but the share price was crashing. Mark rang his brokers, but was reassured that everything would be OK. A deal was being prepared to transfer his shares into a new Gary Player named company. Mark bought even more shares. Right near the end, we were assured that, you know, even if the stock hits 20, 10 cents, don't sell it because this deal will look after you. And eventually it did. It hit 10 cents and, and ceased trading. And uh, not long after that, I asked for written confirmation of, of the fact that we would receive a, a stock in this new company. And, you know, that's a year and a half ago now. So we yet to see whether that company actually lists and, and gives us the opportunity to sell that stock and, and get our money back. Mark has been given share certificates in a private US company called Gary Player Golf. The old company is gone. Gary Player's private company, based in the Virgin Islands tax haven, is the largest shareholder in Gary Player Golf. His son and business manager, Mark Player, is also a substantial shareholder and he's been chairman.